there's a lot of fire and a lot of hatred, but there's also some laughs. Hey guys, this is my review for a film that I just watched on the spot. I don't know how long it's been on Netflix for, but I watched The Most Hated Woman in America. This film is a biography about Madeline Murray O'Hare, one of the most controversial and technically one of the biggest changers in American history. She is the woman that sued the Baltimore School District to take the prayer out of school districts, the morning prayer. They, she's the woman who got that banned. This was a very interesting woman. She was a fighter and she was, she had stones. Even if you didn't agree with her opinion, she was strong with it. And she would go after the subjects that people would possibly not want to talk about or would definitely caused controversy. This woman lived for it. And whether you believe her changes were positive or negative, this woman did a lot of stuff that most people would have thought impossible, not just for a woman, but for anyone in general. So this film does chronologically follow her from a young age all the way up into her late into the end of her life. So first off the bat, I definitely want to compliment Melissa Leo. She is freaking phenomenal in this film. This is the best performance she has definitely done ever since The Fighter. What was cool about her was her relationship with her son, because this is a relationship that he is the one who basically gave her the edge, the motivation to start everything, and that backfires on him as he slowly starts to kind of fall away to the side to his mother's political agenda, and in the end, the, the relationship between the two completely sours, and he goes back on what his mother has basically been trying to accomplish. This film has two timelines, mind you. First is the present, or present-ish, of when she has been kidnapped, and we are recalling events that led up to that moment from when she started her political agenda to all of her major uh, accomplishments to when she was kidnapped. And the other thing I want to compliment is the editing. The editing is solid. There's really good transitions. There is fantastic pacing for maybe two things. The first one is the relationship between her and her son. It kind of sours very suddenly. It starts to break and then all of a sudden it's in the deep end and you kind of wanted a little bit more time with that mainly because of what happens at the end of the film. This film is a kind of a edgy comedy really. Even during the kidnapping scenes, Melissa Leo is making you laugh because she is a savage woman. But then the last 10 minutes just completely go off the deep end and this film goes from a comedy to an extremely dark, serious film. Like, it goes dark. When my buddy and I were watching it, we both sitting there with our mouths agap thinking, what just happened? This just went from a comedy to something completely different, and it's actually disturbing. That is probably my second biggest issue with this film, is it has a tonal shift of a boulder smashing you in the face. The change is so reckless that you almost get whiplash from it because of how sudden it is. And the film ends on that dark note. So you are all happy and whatnot and kind of, huh, you know, whoa, I wonder what's gonna happen. And then holy shit, that went dark. What I feel they could have done is they could have chopped that up. They could have shortened that. Definitely for a certain scene. There's one scene in particular that goes on for an extremely uncomfortable amount of time that you'll be sitting there going, why are we still watching this? The other part is they could have taken away some of these scenes. There's a few things that are that jump it up in the rating department. They probably is rated R almost for it. And it's not because of swearing, it's just the tonal issue at the end. And that kind of I felt that ruined the film the tone of the film. It didn't need to show that. It could have shown that in you know, in parts, or it could have cut away or not shown everything, but I don't know, it was just a really weird transition at the end. But otherwise, the film is still a funny, 
historical drama. It has really great characters. Melissa Leo is fantastic as Madeline. And if anything, Josh Lucas is in this too. And I actually think he was good as his character, which is funny because Josh Lucas really isn't anything except, I don't know, a Bradley Cooper lookalike, but blonde to me. So I thought he was decent in it. That's the first time for that. Either way, guys, I'm going to give The Most Hated Woman in America a 4 out of 7. It is a fun movie, but that ending just doesn't make sense in terms of how the rest of the film is structured. I enjoyed the film as a whole, but just that change is so freaking weird that it completely offsets the rest of the film. Anyways, that's all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you guys next time.